Hello, listener, and welcome to Bite Size Tales, the audio flash fiction podcast. In this week's story, inspired by The Wizard of Oz, you might think you know the entire tale of Dorothy Gale, but what is the destiny that awaits this young woman? Destiny of the Wicked, written and read by Wayne Cole. There is a long forgotten saying in the land of Oz, if you kill a witch, you become the witch. It was mostly lost to time as no one save the most powerful dares to even oppose them. Then came Dorothy Gale from Kansas. This girl waltzed right into Oz, dropping a house on the Wicked Witch of the East and stealing her magical shoes. Not long after, she slew the Wicked Witch of the West as well. Before leaving Oz, she convinced the wizard to abandon the Emerald City and place the Scarecrow on the throne. The Tin Woodsman takes charge of the Winkies. The Lion is declared King of the Beasts. Over the course of just a few weeks, this small girl changed the entire power dynamic of our world, and then she left. If the legends are true, then by slaying two witches, she would inherit both of their powers and roles. Since they were wicked, the magic would twist her, enhancing her darker emotions and desires. This is the true danger of fighting evil. Sometimes, in the fight to defeat evil, you fall prey to becoming that which you hate the most. Dorothy should be destined to become one of the most powerful and evil beings in the history of Oz. But she went home to a world without magic. What does that mean for the power and the roles that she should be inheriting? I was thinking over these questions in my classroom when she came into the room. Good morning, Dorothy. I greeted her with a smile, masking my concern. Good morning, Mr. Franklin. The girl always seemed so happy, but I could see a sadness behind her eyes, something hidden behind a smile that I might not notice if I were not doing the same thing myself. A year ago, I gave up everything I knew to travel to Kansas. I needed to know if this girl is the biggest danger that Oz has ever known, or if the stolen power and influence is being suppressed. I needed to get close enough to watch her, and so I took a new identity and became a teacher at her school. I'm not sure how long my identity will hold before I'm discovered to be a fraud, so I must work quickly to establish trust and gather as much information as I can. How was your weekend? Always start with a probing open question. The sigh that escaped her did not match the smile on her face. Boring. Nothing interesting ever happens around here. Life on a farm can't be that boring. At least it keeps you busy. I don't want to be busy. It's the same chores every day. Nothing ever matters. I've heard this speech before from her. I can't really blame her either. After experiencing a world as magical as Oz, who could be happy in a mundane place like this? Still, this world has its own wonders. Oz has technology, but the technology here is available to all and developing at such a fast rate. I'm sure the banquets of the Emerald City might compare, but the food here is vast improvement over what you can find in the average village of Oz, particularly meat dishes. When all the animals can talk, meat is not particularly popular among most of the cultures. It is also far safer here, But to a girl who has known this world all her life and only glimpsed mine, I can understand the wanderlust. I must question, though, if the magic dormant inside her might be pulling her to return. I have no way to return home unless she finds one. That's something I can never allow. Dorothy Gale must remain in Kansas, and that means I have to as well. It means I need to find ways to help her embrace her home. If you didn't live on a farm, 
What would you be doing with your free time? What do you want to be doing? To give her credit, she thought about the question before answering. I can't be sure if she was debating the answer or remembering her time in Oz. I don't know, but I want adventure. I want to see new things and meet new people. So it's less about wanting to do anything in particular, but more a case of the grass being greener elsewhere. Everywhere has its own set of problems. I guess, but how do you know the perfect place for you if you don't know what else is out there? If you don't go, try to find it. You never know it exists. I opened the drawer on my desk and pulled out a handful of travel brochures. New York, Chicago, San Francisco. You can read all about the places of the world, learn about them, and decide which ones are worth visiting. But what if the place I want to visit doesn't have a travel guide? Then maybe it's too dangerous to visit. There are plenty of wondrous places in this world that do have travel guides. Traveling isn't going to solve your problems, though. Traveling is fun, but the best part is coming back and having a home waiting, having people that care about you. You need to find ways to appreciate that while you have it. When you grow up, you don't have to stay here, but you need to be able to make where you are a home, or you'll always pine for what you don't have. My own words hit me hard. I don't have anyone here and spend far too much of my time thinking about where I came from. I might be here for a reason, but I don't feel like it's a home. For my own sanity, I need to start making this my home, and not thinking of it as just a mission. I'm never returning to Oz, so this is my home now. My purpose might be to protect Oz from Dorothy, but that is not a life. I need to start making friends, and plan for my own future outside of her. Mr. Franklin, are you okay? She was staring at me, and I realized that I had been sitting there silent and lost in my own thoughts. If she had said anything, I hadn't heard it. Yes, Mr. Franklin, whatever are you thinking about? The voice came from an older white-haired man leaning against the frame of my classroom door. Wearing a black suit and top hat to accentuate his handlebar mustache, the look reminded me of a circus ringmaster. He had said my name with a sarcastic tone, like he knew it was not real. Dorothy's eyes lit up at the sight of the stranger in a way I had never seen them do. It wasn't the mask of a smile, but true joy. She ran to him, wrapped her arms around his waist in a huge hug. She was talking so fast I could not make out what she was trying to say to him. The man returned her hug, but his eyes never left my own. He radiated a confidence in a way few people can. "'Who might you be, good sir?' I asked, trying to keep the worry from my voice. If this man knew I wasn't who I claimed to be, he could ruin everything. "'Oscar Diggs, at your service.' He tipped his hat and bowed his head, unable to bow further due to the girl hanging on to him. Though I suspect you know me by one of my other names. Oz, the Great and Powerful. The Wizard, I gasped. Just so. Dorothy, dear, your teacher here is not who he says he is. I know not why he's come here, but this man followed you from Oz. I received a message from Scarecrow by a flying monkey to come and check on you. Dorothy looked at me with a rage in her eyes I had never seen on the girl. I stumbled over my words trying to defend myself, but she screamed at me, Just shut up! Suddenly, I couldn't speak. My lips felt glued together, so I reached up feeling my face in panic. My mouth was gone. There was just smooth skin where it should be. Somehow in this world without magic, she had access to it. Well, now, isn't that interesting? The wizard asked with a smug look on his face. He looked down at the girl. How would you like to return to Oz and see your friends again? My balloon is right outside. Oh, I would like that very much. Excellent. Grab your things and head on out. 
I'll be right along after I have a few words with your teacher. I can't wait to see everyone again, she said, as she rushed from my classroom. As she got further away, I could feel my mouth returning. Well now, Mr. Franklin, I don't know what your game is, but that little girl is going to redefine the meaning of the word power, and I'm not about to let you or anyone else get in her way. You don't know what you're doing. She has the power of both wicked witches, and if she goes back, it's going to twist her into something evil. He smiled at me again and pulled a revolver out of his jacket pocket. Perhaps. Or perhaps I can guide her into what I want her to be. Either way, she's my ticket to greatness. Ask yourself this. Why did I order her to kill the Wicked Witch of the West? Was my leaving her in Oz really an accident? Then he shot me. It was only in the leg and not life-threatening, but it hurt worse than anything I've ever experienced. So you don't follow me. Then he left my classroom, whistling, as he walked down the hall. That encounter was two weeks ago, and no one has seen Diggs or Dorothy since. I can only assume that he did successfully return to Oz, and that means I need to as well. I must find a way, or everything will be lost. I need to save Oz from Dorothy, but I need to save that little girl from herself as well. Only in Kansas can she have any hope of not becoming something truly wicked. I rev my motorcycle and ride towards the tornado. This might kill me, but I can't live knowing I didn't at least try. And now a word from our author. I've always really enjoyed stories that take the Wizard of Oz and twist it into something new. I was very careful in this story to only pull from the actual books and not from the movie. Seeing as the book is in public domain and the movie is not. I find that a lot of these tales tend to twist Dorothy. And that does seem like a good place to start with it. This chapter of Bite Size Tales has been brought to you under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Intro and outro music is Fantasy Motion by Alexander Nakarada, provided under a Creative Commons 4.0 license. If you enjoyed what you heard today, we would greatly appreciate reviews and recommendations to your friends. Finally, for more information about our authors, please visit bitesizetales.com. We look forward to reading to you next time.